Good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to be here on a sunny Sunday morning. The alternative would be to be at home with um, six 13-year-olds at a sleepover. So uh, I think this will be a lot more enjoyable. I hope so. Uh, can you hear me okay? So uh, as Lucille said, um, my... Um, let's go forward. My talk is about making decisions, but really um, it's sharing my experiences and it's, this talk is really not so much about the decisions that I've made as part of the science and in terms of developing the product, but it's the decisions made during a career in science uh, and it's key decision points. And most typically my philosophy is you may to make a decision, but I, rather than worrying about the decision, too much is worrying or thinking about how once you've made that decision what you do with that and where you go with it because there are more than one ways to make a decision there's more than one way to go with that but cl classically make it right you know buy into it and try and make it work so using my this is my career pathway but it's probably representative of uh, a lot of career pathways and there are a lot of you starting out in science or in, in a career and, and often pathways are portrayed like this a nice straight line where you start off um, I did my degree at uh, well it's another university but when I did it it was a poly just, just down the road um, and then became a medical laboratory scientific officer at Newcastle General Hospital um, and then moved into um, the pharmaceutical industry to become a lab scientist did a PhD part-time um, then moved to being what I call a desk scientist, so managing the work and managing the studies rather than doing the practical work or doing less of the practical work. Then moving on to being a, a director of the teams and the science and the strategy and then finally um, being involved in managing the site and working with the other sites in the group. So as often it looks like this but in reality career pathways, certainly mine, are more like this where it's not a straight line. Um, and there's more than one way to get to your goal. And, and I like to say at the outset, I didn't really have this goal in mind when I started out. I didn't have an idea that I'm, you know, I'm going to start in the lab, I'm going to work my way up, and I'm going to be responsible for a group or a team or a site. I just wanted to work. I knew I liked science. I was curious. I, I liked working with people. Uh, and particularly, I liked learning things and learning things together and, and things that help people's health. So that was why I went into, uh, into a hospital research laboratory. But then my decisions, I moved sideways to in a similar position in another area, then moved, uh, then my PhD let me move sideways again, uh, and then other, other opportunities came. But I didn't have that goal in mind. I just went with the decisions, went with making them right, went with the opportunities. And the only, looking at this, you may think, oh, well, I probably had, you know, how many interviews or how many jobs would you apply for as part of your career? Um, and in the 25 years that I've been in, uh, in this field, I've had two formal interviews and they were for the first two jobs that I took. After that, I've not applied formally for any of the roles. They've happened because I've tried something new, uh, thought I'd give something a go. So I'll share my ex experience as an example, which hopefully will help you in either setting out in a career or if you're making decisions now of, of things to bear in mind. So, knowing that um, this is research and development, uh, the, the topic for today, I've got a, a pill, although I think that those among you may say, well, actually, that's a capsule, not a pill, but the acronym is pill, uh, and, and making decisions right. And this is my personal prescription, if you like, of the ingredients that I feel are important and have been important to me in making decisions. So, ingredients, and they spell out pill with a bit of poetic license. So, perseverance, pragmatism, instinct, and luck. So I'll spend a minute or so on each of these. All of these are involved, or I feel are involved to a greater or lesser extent. But I'll use some examples from decisions I've made where one of these is featured more than the others. Uh, and also, for each of these, there are a couple of salient quotes that I feel are important. I, I found them very useful, and also they help to remember some of the factors. So, you may remember the quotes. If you don't remember what I said, then you may remember the quotes and it might be useful to you. So perseverance, um, and particularly the second one of these, in terms of the, it's, a, it's not a long race, it's lots of short races. And that's certainly how, I've, how I like to think of things, how I've tended to think of things, is in manageable chunks. Because if you look at a long path ahead, you might never start because you're thinking, what's the worst that can happen? You know, what if that doesn't work? What if this doesn't work? And I'd like to turn that around as another 
suggestion is that think about what's the best that can happen. You know, because that might just be what happens. Don't, you know, be, the worst might never happen. And you may lose out a lot of opportunities on that. So an example from, from my life is when I decided to do a PhD part-time. Uh, I got the, that was one of the reasons for moving into industry because the I was lucky, and a bit of luck in there as well, that the company that I went to was lucky enough, I was lucky enough that they would sponsor me to do that. But it was gonna take a lot of work. So once I decided to do that, I thought, right, I'm gonna have to persevere at this and see it through. Uh, partly because I wanted to see it through, but because I learned a lot in the process. So rather than think of it as six years, which is what it was, I thought, well, it's just another couple of years. And that was how I thought of it. Um, and whenever anybody asked me, you know, I know you're doing a PhD, how far are you through? I'd say, oh, I've just got a couple of years to go. Um, and then eventually it was just a couple of years. And I stopped at the end and looked back and thought, well, if I'd, if I'd thought of it as six years, I don't know that I would have made that start. Uh, but I, but I, and, I, and actually, even if I hadn't carried it through, I learned a heck of a lot through that process. So persevere, but as well as persevering, also remember to be a little bit pragmatic. There's a time when perseverance, you need to stop and think, do I need to just accept this or, or do something different? So um, this illustration is from, I don't know how many of you know Rabbi Lionel Blue. He's a, a, a pioneering um, British rabbi. He does a lot of uh, thought for the days on the radio. And this is one of his. And essentially, what he was saying was there were two people. And I've used that in my example of pragmatism. And, there are, and my husband would freely admit he's the first kind of person. And I'm the second kind of person. But we get along very well and we, we work out our, uh, our decisions together. But the first kind of person will fire and fire and fire at a target. And, and you may never hit that target. You may hit it, but, if, but you learn a lot by actually trying to hit the target. But some people may think, well, I feel that they failed and will feel disappointed and feel frustrated that they're never going to hit that target. And so they'll spend a lot of time. And that's the same with decisions. You might worry and worry and worry about a decision um, and then never make it. When actually the second kind of person or the second way is to fire your arrow and then move the target to where that arrow lands. Obviously, I fire a few first, so it's not just sort of haphazardly and then you pick the first thing, but think, actually, that arrow's landed here. It's not where I expected to go, but there's an opportunity there. I might learn something from it. I'll go with that and see where it takes me. And that's very much been my, my philosophy. So, and into, into that is, is instinct. There's a bit of instinct in that, that feels like the right thing. Um, I very, I very much like the last one of these because I feel that instinct is a huge thing for me. So, so I wouldn't quite like that last one. But I feel that instinct is, is very important and it's probably the biggest factor that I use in making decisions and in making them right afterwards and in, in working through them. And I've, with this, this first couple of quotes there, I do feel that, and there's a lot of scientific research out there, there's papers by Nobel Prize winners, science prize winners about what role does instinct play in scientific research, you know, there's famous quotes about 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. So there's that perseverance again with a little bit of luck. Um, so you, and, and I feel that there is a lot of, a lot of my instincts are, a lot of it is actually what is probably in your brain there. And it's, it's little, your experiences telling you something. And so do, listen to that, listen to that voice. Uh, I would say particularly listen to it if your instinct is telling you something is wrong or it, there is a problem with it, because that, you know, if it says you something's right, obviously think about both, especially because if, if you want to make the decision right in the end, and you want to work with it, but your instinct has told you it's wrong, then you, it may be a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, because you've said it's, you feel wrong, you almost make it wrong, and, and you don't know whether it would have been, or it's just because that's what you felt. So if your instinct is telling you it's wrong, really think about it, because you're probably less likely to make it work in that, in that instance. Um, an example of, uh, of instinct for me, and linking in with, with pragmatism as well from the, the previous example, is when I moved from being a bench scientist to more of a desk scientist. And that came from having finished my PhD, I'd done a lot of the research as a, by organizing studies. So I was asked, did I want to then be involved in more organizing the studies than doing the practical work? And, and that was an opportunity. It was something that the, the company wanted, they, they needed people in that area but it also fitted with what I found were actually my strengths and I like, I like to look at the broader picture. You know, having, although I spent a lot of time looking down a microscope in my first part of my life, I actually like to look more broadly 
and, and that's the risk of science, is, is don't forget that there's another world out there and to, to think more broadly as well as focused. So that was a pragmatism that, well, that will also maybe give me other opportunities. I might learn things, um, it'll give me opportunities to work in other areas and find out other, other, op other things I could do. So my instinct led me there as, as well. Um, also, uh, one thing in terms of instinct, in terms of you know, when your instinct tells you something might not work, is uh, I had an opportunity to move to another company. Um, about the time I was, just after that, I was offered the role of leading, being the science lead for the site I work at. And I thought long and hard about that because it was a great opportunity, more money, um, really good opportunities to develop in terms of my career. But my instinct told me that although it was really good, I felt there was more that I wanted to do and I could do where I was. Um, and so that then, then I, I worked with that and, and worked on making that, that right. And just after that, um, you can see the look factored in after that, because just after that, um, I took a risk, uh, and this is a quote by Janet Rowley, which I really uh, believe in, that do something different. You know, there is, there is luck in there, and, and people do feel uncomfortable about that. But sometimes feeling uncomfortable isn't a bad thing. You know, change is all around us. You can't stop it, uh, and by trying to stop it, you can make yourself feel more uncomfortable. So go with your instincts a bit. Go with where the look takes you. Um, you know, I got the opportunity by, by deciding not to go with one role, I got the opportunity for, it, for another. Uh, just after, about a month after that, the company that I was with at the time announced, like a lot of pharmaceutical companies and a lot of companies now are going through changes that they were going to change and one result of that change was that the function where I worked was going to be at risk. So you could think, well that was bad luck because, um, you know, if I hadn't done that, if I'd gone somewhere else, I wouldn't be in that situation. But actually, I, I thought, well, no, I'm going to make this work and really use my enthusiasm, keenness to learn, to learn more about what the opportunities for, for myself and for others, uh, and really pushed collaboration. So that helped in terms of moving us through to a situation now where we're in a, a, good, a good position, working with a new company, um, and there's lots of opportunities out, out there. So, you know, look, there is a bit of luck but it, you can't forget the other three of perseverance, pragmatism, and, and instinct. And finally, uh, which takes us nicely back to perseverance, is this quote by uh, Gary Player, um, golfer, that the harder you work, uh, the luckier you get. Because someone had said to him, you know, you're, you're really lucky, you hit that shot every time. He said, yeah, it's amazing how much luckier I get the more I practice. So there is a bit of practice in there. And so um, just to, to close and go back, as I say, it's a circle. Um, but remember the pill, if it's not an aspirin, then it's uh, perseverance, pragmatism, instinct and luck. If you're thinking of make, if there's a decision that you've made, go with it and make it work, buy into it. Ultimately, what you shouldn't do is try and reverse that decision because it wouldn't be the same decision again and you can't go back. You need to go forward. And part of that going forward might be that you may need to make a new decision. But that new decision will be based on the experiences that you've had from either good or bad decisions that you've made in the past. Um, and at the beginning, I said that I didn't have a career goal in mind of moving from the lab to, to the boardroom. Uh, actually, my, my one career aim when I was at school was to be a teacher. Um, and I've still, obviously I've said still, because I like to think of opportunities, I've still not been a teacher. But I always, again, there was a bit of pragmatism all the way through because I thought, well, I may, not get, I may get another chance to try and do teaching, but I won't get another chance to do this. And that was part of that pragmatism, the same with moving into doing a B, a C rather than a B ed. Well, I could maybe do a postgraduate, but I won't get a chance to do a B, a C. Doing a PhD part time, well, I maybe get to do a postgraduate, but I can't do this again. So it's that kind of a bit of pragmatism all the way through there. Um, so at the end of this, you might decide that probably I, made, I did make that decision right by not going into teaching because who would want to listen to me every day? But uh, time will tell. So uh, I hope that's been useful. I hope people have, uh, there's something that rings true with folks either starting out or through your career now. Um, and good luck with those decisions. Thank you very much.